it's been a fantastic dick sissel year. They're an eruptive species and usually about every four years we get an eruption but uh, we had one last year and this is a huge one. They look like a miniature metal lark. <laughs> There's dozens and dozens of pairs of dick thistles in the bog, in the open meadows and farm fields. This was my second western meadowlark of the day. Eastern meadowlark is the common meadowlark that we'd think of for this area, but this year all I've heard is westerns. <laughs> and they have that bubblier song. The easterns is see you, see me, and the westerns is very bubbly. Well, I'm going to have to let this Leconte go. Got one brief look at him way out there, but he's not singing like when I first pulled up. Uh, well, maybe we'll try again later. And I was right here trying to pitch in a boreal chickadee. A boreal chickadee. You hear the boreal chickadee? Chicka shnee shnee. Chicka shnee shnee. Like a black cap chickadee with a cold, stuffed up nose. But I've been pishing and squeaking. <coughs> Has not come out. Get a little closer. Patience, patience. We're on the Arcola just, uh, just east of Owl Avenue. It's a nice stretch for boreal species. I've heard yellow-bellied flycatcher and winter wrens, ruby-crowned kinglet. Oh, getting a little closer. Let's see if we can get some video. Uh, unsuccessfully, when a car pulled up and they said, hey, are you Sparky? And uh, <laughs> it was the two sons of uh, two friends I worked with at Wilderness Canoe Base up on the Gunflint Trail. Uh, back in the 80s. Yeah, so that was pretty cool. And uh, they wanted to see a Leconte Sparrow. So we went over to Arcola and uh, I interviewed him while we were waiting to see the Leconte hop up onto a perch and sing. Uh, I'm Johannes Nelson and um, I've been living internationally for a long time now and I've just been living in the DR. I fell in love with birds two years ago and here I'm back in America now and Saxon was one of the first stops I made. <laughs> and I'm Chris Nelson, his brother, and also living internationally. And I live in Japan and before that the Philippines. And we're both teachers. And this is my first birdie outing. And it's been like 48 hours of like non-stop birding and waking up early. How many lifers you got this Oh, this trip? Well, I mean, I guess, uh, however, uh, basically however all of the species birds. species we've got, like maybe like 65 plus. <laughs> yeah. So do you think you're hooked trip. now or is it kind of like, uh? Pretty, yeah, definitely. Like it'll take me a while to get to the level of hook that Yo is, I think. <laughs> Go back as a nerd birder. Bird nerd, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely something I'm going to be doing nonstop from now on. What were highlights of your trip to Sac Zim? We got up super early and we were lucky enough to see two owls yesterday. The first one has a name. The first one's name is Manny. He also has an address. <laughs> he sits on the corner of Saxon 7 <laughs> on a post. Um, so when the guy that pointed us in that direction, we, we kind of generally searched within a few miles of that intersection before returning to that intersection and seeing him on a post at that intersection. Manny. Uh, Manny the owl. <laughs> and then we saw another owl on Arcola Road. That was exciting. And for me, I've, se I've seen a few lifers. So some really common ones like magpies that I just never seen before, but some cool ones like bittern and the owl and the Leconte sparrow, which is somewhere in this grass right here. Probably, <laughs> probably somewhere, right here. Somewhere, yes. He's, Watch our backs here. Thank you. We've been waiting and waiting and waiting, and he trying to destroy me. Right that's now. right. He's probably gonna sneaking up on us and gonna kill us soon. A lot of black-billed cuckoo. Yo's <laughs> motion is <laughs> cuckoo, <laughs> and then sprinting after. <laughs> Actually yeah. not. I have to tone it down when I'm with other birders because my excitement often <laughs> scares the birds away. <laughs> Dick Sissel eruption is kind of cool. I'd never seen those and they're everywhere. Two pairings of red cranes that we saw. Or not oh, yeah, red. the sandhill cranes. Sandhill cranes. Yeah. Those are cool. Those yeah. are really beautiful birds. Yeah. And you know, 30 years ago you would have been here, never would have seen one, you know. I mm. mean, they're just, they've just been increasing and increasing, which is awesome. On your way out, you're going to go see Manny? Yep. Stop by Manny. <laughs> quick high five. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, little fist bump. All right, guys, thank you. Have a great trip. Thanks, thanks. Thank you. <laughs>
Thanks for showing us the LeCount. Your mom's gonna be excited you're on virtually live. I know, I'm excited I'm on it. I watched that. <laughs> it's also been a fantastic year. I guess fantastic in the sense of big numbers of European skippers. And they're a non-native species, so maybe it's not so fantastic. But hundreds and hundreds of them. And I just found this black swallowtail just north of Meadowlands. This is a rare butterfly in the North Woods. We are at the very northern edge of their range here, but what a stunner. Frank Nicoletti. I'm uh, friends with friends of Zach Zim and work for Hawk Ridge Bird Observatory as well. Kestrels in Minnesota have declined 70% um, from wow. data that's been collected by breeding bird atlas and breeding bird senses and, and winter counts. And so one of the things I, I thought about about seven, eight years ago is to put up Kestrel boxes. We started with 14 and now we're up to 50. Wow. This year we have a um, occupancy rate of 22 boxes which is pretty amazing not quite 50 percent we're hoping to put up more boxes this uh summer slash spring to maybe make 75 in zach Jim bog itself fantastic uh, so a each year now we come out and monitor we have a core good great core of volunteers that monitor the boxes i come out and help with the banning uh hmm. sarah uh, Beaster and there it's uh, Clinton and lots of other people are volunteering to work on this American Kestrel project. Last year we had uh, about 60 young produce. This year we should be around 85 to 90. Uh, today we have Hannah. <laughs> Hannah. <laughs> Kestrel. <laughs> Sarah. Sarah. And, Sarah. Yep. <laughs> and she's done a great job, Sarah. Right here. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're going to start the day off here. Oh, what are we going to do here, guys? Hey, what's up, buddy? <laughs> oh, boy. Look at those pins. That's wow. A female? Look at their little belly. Yeah, oh my goodness. Oh, little Look at that tail. Okay. And I'm holding his whole body. Okay. And I've got his um, joint right there, so I've okay. got it secured. Okay. So the leg can't go anywhere. So slide it in, turn, and press hard. And then you do it again at a 90 degree angle. Okay. They don't feel a thing. Uh, no, uh, the band is, is sized so that it fits over the leg and goes up and down and around. No problem at all. So this is an L, this is an LF, meaning nestling female. We're going to apply a blue rubber uh, plastic band so that we know that all the birds from Zach Zim, if they get recovered anywhere or seen anywhere in the country, we will know that um, they came from the Zach Zim population. Plastic band on now. And then I'll use a little heat uh, pen to close it up. Got some fat. Yeah, these guys are quite fat. Yeah, well, they'll be fatter now than they will be for a long time. Not just guess. They really don't hurt you good. No, you're gonna have to get over it. Try it. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah, and then make sure that they're all lined up. Oh, you're right. Oh, let's 
See what I'm doing here? Okay. So it's a line. Yeah, so it, it seals it. Money shot. Yeah. Place them nicely in there. <laughs> what characters? Box 31 on Swenson Road, it's June 29th. That's actually a good sign. <laughs> Good sign. <laughs> huh. Okay. Usually it's a two fan. We're also trying, uh, we're putting modus transmitters on kestrels this year on adults. We've uh, equipped 12 kestrels. The stations are gonna be going up next week at various locations so we can track where the adults are hunting and what habitat they're using, things like that. I think the re decline is, reason for decline in most of other parts of Minnesota. Uh, I think it's a combination of where they winter. Uh, also uh, predators. They're fairly easy to capture. Um, out east, they, they definitely have trouble with Cooper's Hawks, which we don't really have here, but uh, definitely where they're, where they're going and wintering and habitat loss. We still have a fairly good intact habitat here where we have small little farms. We're not big corporate farms that uh, the tree lines are gone and things like that. That's one of the main things is habitat changes. Awesome, well, thanks for that. Oh yeah, you oh, there's a cool beetle on here. Okay. Might be a stink bug actually. I think it's a stink bug. <laughs> My bad. Not bad. Yeah. Now they might so jump. One. You see them? Yep. Oh, they're Do so they look cute. older? Yeah. yeah. Now just be careful. There's a male. Yeah, it seems like there's maybe two males. Okay. Or three. He just pooped. There'll be another male. I don't see any prey remains. No, yeah, I didn't see any in the other one too. Well, they're, you know why? Because they're still eating a lot of small prey, uh, bugs and stuff. There is a tail of a marine. Okay, we'll get it later. How many more you got? That's it. Okay, four. There were four, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Yep, 20. Now this is Sarah put, applying a U.S. Fish and Wildlife ban on it. Actually looks pretty good. They're a little more squirmy. Yes, they mm -hmm. are. They're, they're older mm -hmm. than the last group. Look at the breast. It actually yeah, has actual has actual yeah. feather tracks showing up. These are all feather tracks. Oh wow! Yep, and that's how they molt. Huh. Oh no way! <laughs> right in there. <laughs> Looking grumpy. The yeah. Huh. Wow. And the the little ridge. As you heard Frank say, our kestrel nest box program has been a great success, and I'm going to throw up some numbers here on the screen of how many birds we've fledged over the years and we kind of I think we invented something a little novel <laughs> I don't know maybe somebody else did it before us but we use a GoPro on a long pole to put inside the nest boxes to check on the status of the of the kestrels or sometimes it's tree swallows we never know what's going to be in these boxes it's a less intrusive way and takes less time than setting up a ladder climbing up sticking your you know opening up the box sticking your head in there so it's really a kind of a unique process and thanks to all our volunteers we've had a ton of volunteers over the years uh, who have gone out and in the bugs and donned the rubber boots 
and uh, to check on all these boxes and now we're up to 50. And a huge thanks to Clinton for coordinating this effort for friends. Uh, he works with Frank. Frank is the headbander. Back at the Welcome Center, naturalist Mark Johnson found a red-eyed vireo nest. Very cool, and you see those white strips, kind of characteristic of these guys. It's not toilet paper, it's strips of birch bark. Pretty cool. I put the GoPro up and here is what we found in the nest. Red-eyed vireo, you can hear the adults singing in the background. Amazing songsters. One researcher in Canada counted one male doing 22,000 songs in one day. <laughs> That's an average of over or nearly 30 songs per minute all day long. Crazy. They're one of the few birds you're going to hear in the summer at midday. Midsummer, midday. <laughs> They'll still be singing. Also a Phoebe nest. And the Phoebe's nest every year on top of the beam at the Welcome Center. And this year we got a double decker. They they raised one brood and are on their second brood now. Five eggs, that's kind of a normal clutch. Four to five is average. I think they can have three to eight. Boy, I hope you can join us for the bio blitz. Uh, that's coming up here on Saturday, Saturday the 17th. And it is a blast, it's always a blast. We've got leaders covering field trips from sedges to spiders to wildflowers. Uh, yeah, we'll have a bird trip too. Uh, so uh, you can find more info online, but it is just a blast. We go out in the field with these experts for five hours and then you come back and here's the really fun part. You get to share your discoveries, what you found. Uh, you bring back uh, some samples, share them with the group. Yeah, we're gonna have a fishes field trip. Um, check out the website, see what else is happening. Butterflies, yeah. So come on and join us this Saturday. More info on the website. It's free, great fun for kids and families. So we'll see you Saturday for BioBlitz 9. This is BioBlitz 9. And BioBlitzes are, they started, BioBlitzes began back in the 60s or 70s when maybe a piece of rainforest in the jungles was going to be clear-cut and scientists wanted to know what they were going to lose basically and the teams of scientists just went in and recorded and documented every kind of living organism they could find and now it's kind of become a social event and a fun get-together for naturalists so come on join us well thanks for joining me for virtually live 16, 19. Yeah. Uh, I think I'll come back in a couple weeks with a wrap up of the bio blitz and we'll talk about summer birding, late summer birding in the bog. Is it possible? Is it worth it? Uh, I don't know. Stay tuned. So until then, keep your boots in the bog and your head in the spruce boughs. All right. Take care. <laughs>